What is going on guys and before we get into today's video I just wanted to real quickly announce that I'm actually doing a giveaway for some Nickelodeon goodies on this video and all you guys have to do to enter to win them is A. Be subscribed, B. Like the video, and C. Leave a comment down below. The comment can be about absolutely anything. Now I'm picking out some random winners, giving out with some all kinds of Nickelodeon swag. If you guys are fans of Nickelodeon like I am, you guys will really enjoy this stuff. I've got all kinds of fun things laying around to send out to you guys. So, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, and leave a comment down below with anything, and I'll pick out some random winners. But let's get right into the video. Nickelodeon has been around for decades and has been a long-lasting juggernaut in the cartoon world for years. Shows like Ren and Stimpy, SpongeBob, Fairly Odd Parents, and The Rugrats have shaped the way we watch cartoons today and for the rest of time. But it always hasn't been smooth sailing for the network. In fact, they've made more than a few missteps along the way. I'm your host as always, KMAC Time, and today I want to take a closer look at Nickelodeon's 10 biggest mistakes that almost destroyed the network. Let's eat. Oops. Kicking off our list was the time the news outlets accused SpongeBob of brainwashing children into being homosexual. According to the creator Steven Hillenberg, SpongeBob is essentially asexual. He reproduces by budding like a sea sponge would in the wild. However, his extremely close friendship with Patrick and his flirtatious surrounding interactions with Squidward turned the character into an unintentional gay icon within the homosexual community. Bye Squidward! Bye Mr. Krabs! Bye Squidward! You said bye Squidward twice! I like Squidward. James Dodson, a member of a conservative advocacy group called Focus on Family, accused the show of pushing homosexual tendencies on children in 2005, and the story blew up. However, the show was simply just preaching tolerance and acceptance of all people, and the story was quickly debunked as untrue, as it should have been, and the show continued to be on a Nickelodeon's flagship program. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Avatar The Last Airbender was another smash hit show for Nickelodeon. The story arc was incredible and to this day stands as the gold standard for storytelling in animated series. Sadly, the same cannot be said for the 2010 live action movie. The movie was directed by M. Night Shyamalan and was universally panned and hated by fans and critics alike. It received a 6% on Rotten Tomatoes and is one of the lowest scored movies on the website. It was actually supposed to be the first film in a trilogy of movies, but due to such an awful response, they canceled all follow-up plans for other movies. Now, while the movie actually grossed $130 million and is the fourth highest grossing Nickelodeon film of all time, it certainly hurt the network as fans lost confidence in them and their movie-making abilities. Back in the day, Doug was one of Nickelodeon's biggest and most popular shows. It was one of the first three Nickelodeon original animated series alongside Run and Stimpy and the Rugrats. Despite the show doing well, Nickelodeon actually decided to cancel it after just four seasons. However, this wasn't their big mistake they made. The mistake they made was selling the rights to the show to Disney. Disney made massive changes in the show, including most voice actors, including Doug, being changed and ran the show for three seasons on ABC's Saturday mornings. Fans of the series hate the Disney version of the show and blame Nickelodeon for letting Disney ruin a legacy of such a classic animation show. Over the years, Nickelodeon has had a handful of sister stations. Nicktoons, Nick Jr., and Noggin to name a few. But the one that everyone almost always forgets about because it was shut down after just eight years is called Nick Gas, also known as Nick's Game and Sports. Game sports for kids. Gas. Watch out, kids, because it's time for another gas grill. Hey, who's getting... The sister network aired mostly older game shows that have been removed from the main network, like Guts, Double Dare 2000, and The Legend of the Hidden Temple along with reruns of other Nickelodeon shows like Rocket Power and Speed Racer X as they were based around extreme sports. The mistake Nickelodeon made was thinking that this type of programming would catch on with the fans. 
The network was a paid add-on in most cable providers' programming, and many people were not willing to dish out extra cash to watch reruns of old Nickelodeon game shows. Because of this, the network was shut down in late 2007 after it was rumored to be losing its parent company Viacom millions of dollars per year. Hi, I'm Kerry Kills of the New Jersey Nets, and you're watching Nick Gas, games and sports for kids. The Rugrats was another early popular show for Nickelodeon Animation, but the show almost fell apart after just three seasons. Debate amongst the writers in the network about Angelica's character almost tore the show apart. Half the writers thought she was too mean and off-putting, while the others thought she was perfect for conveying more complex emotions than children sometimes have. The rift between them led to Nickelodeon firing Paul Germain and others off the main writing staff in 1993 and eventually canceled the show in 1994. It wasn't until reruns of the previous seasons caught on that Nick brought the show back, but they almost got rid of a great show because the writers couldn't agree on a few minor issues. A baby's gotta do what a baby's gotta do. A very similar situation happened with Ren and Stimpy, except this time Nickelodeon really messed it up. The show was by far the most popular of the initial three shows Nickelodeon produced, but it was also the quickest to fade away. The problem with the show stemmed from creator John Kravisky having trouble meeting deadlines with new episodes. And the network was growing more and more concerned about the amount of gross violence in the show. Because of this, Nickelodeon decided to fire him from his own show while in the middle of production of season two. The show quickly fizzed out without him and many people blame Nickelodeon for the throwing out the original creator of it for the show's downfall. The Rugrats ran into yet another controversy in 1998 when it was accused of being pro-anti-Semitism, which it came as a massive shock to the show's creator Arlene Klasky as she herself is half Jewish. The show even featured multiple Hanukkah and Passover episodes that showed off the customs of Jewish and culture. And to this day, we light the menorah every year to remember the miracle of Hanukkah. <laughs> But it was actually a Rugrats newspaper comic strip of all things, which featured Grandpa Boris reciting a Jewish prayer while Tommy curiously stood there and looked confused about what the adults were doing. There was no intention to make fun of the prayer, but Abe Foxman of the ADL thought that including it in a strip of comic was disrespectful and accused Boris's big nose design as resembling Nazi-era depiction of Jews. Of course, the claims were not rooted in the truth and quickly faded away from the public's eye. What are we gonna do? It'll take eight days to make more oil. Funding. One of the more recent Nicktoons game popularity is The Loud House, and it too has run into its fair share of controversy recently. This is Lincoln Loud. That's me. And these are his ten sisters. The show was created by Chris Savino, and is loosely based on his life growing up with a large family. The controversy started back in 2016 when it started to leak that Savino had a long history of sexual assault. There have since been multiple accusations of his misconduct dating all the way back to 2004 when he was still working on the Powerpuff Girls show. And with the rise of the Me Too movement, it really put pressure on Nickelodeon to make a decision. In the end, they ended up firing Savino recently, though and condemning his actions completely. Though Nickelodeon still caught some flack for hiring him in the first place and not being more thorough with the people they bring on. Turn you into a human pretzel! Hey Lori, you are... Nickelodeon is no stranger to making odd choices that upset fans and one of the biggest examples of this has to be the sudden and controversial cancellation of Invader Zim in the middle of production of season 2. Despite having a large following, the show was pulled from the air without warning. There were even scripts that were voiced and ready to be animated, but never saw the light of day. The show has since gained a cult following, and Nick's odd and on time cancellation of the show has made many fans upset. While many people think that the violence is the way that the show got canceled and pulled from the air, it has come out recently that it came down to budgets and target audiences. Zim's character models used intensive CGI process to make, making the show very pricey to animate. 
and the audience for the show was typically the, in the age range of 12 to 17, which is outside of the advertiser's demographic of 5 to 11 years old. It was these two factors that took down the show and really to the chagrin of the fans. <laughs> And finally, the biggest mistake that Nickelodeon has probably ever made has to be rejecting Adventure We're going Time. Turbo Time. You want your booties? Yes, please. Rough. Back in 2007, Nickelodeon stumbled across the pilot for Adventure Time, which had been exploding in popularity on YouTube. But when the show was officially pitched to the network, executives rejected it, claiming it was just too weird and that boys' adventure shows shouldn't feature so many princess characters. Of course, the show was later picked up by Cartoon Network and went on to be a smash hit and a pop culture icon, all while Nickelodeon's programming was struggling and was lacking new and interesting shows. This is easily the biggest mistake Nickelodeon has ever made, and it ended up costing them millions and millions, not to mention just long-term fans of the network. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. If you guys did, like I said, make sure you guys are hitting that like button down below. Favorite this video, all kind of fun stuff. And if we hit 1,000 likes, I'll make another one on Cartoon Network, so let's be looking forward for that. Also, like I said, don't forget that there's actually a giveaway going on in this video. A couple of cool things giving away. Here's some Nickelodeon swag I need to give away. And all you guys have to do is leave a comment down below, be subscribed, and like the video. But until next time, guys, remember that it's always K-Mac time somewhere. Until then, guys, take it easy and peace out.